Hello, and welcome to a, another review of, of anything. anything. Today we're going to review Pacific Rim Uprising, directed by Stephen DeKnight. Follow up to the 2013 Pacific Rim that we reviewed, well we reviewed like two months ago, but it went up last week. So, I'm going to let you get started on your initial thoughts. We're just going to leave plot synopsis and stuff out of this and just talk about our thoughts. I would say this. If you plan on seeing this movie, don't go with uh, like a critical mind, as in, don't go in expecting a whole lot. This was my mistake. Uh, go in with your four-year-old mind that watched Godzilla movies, and that's all you're going for, pretty much. Uh, for me, I give this movie like a lot of props when it comes to the action. But with the writing and directing and stuff like that, that stuff is lackluster. But, uh, yeah, just go for the action. It's fun. See, I was more critical going in. I mean, like, you know, just coming off of, like, recently rewatching the original by, of course, now, like, Academy Award winning director Guillermo del Toro. Mm hmm. Like, I guess I expected more from it. And, uh,. I mean, like, yeah, there's some cool action stuff, I'll admit. If, if you're, like, a f bigger fan of, like, Gundam or Super Sentai. Or Evangelion. Or... Yeah, there's there's quite a few elements from this that, like, because I, I just watched Evangelion, thanks to you, and I recognize a lot of stuff that I'm like, that's, like, directly from End of Evangelion. But I feel like, yeah, if you go into that, the movie with that mindset, that it's going to be dumb and you're not going in with a critical eye like I did, you might find more enjoyment than uh, I did, per se. I, I'm not the biggest fan of this movie, overall. Um, so, you know, the actors and characters, John Boyega is, like, pretty... He's pretty fun, like he usually is. Um, I mean, he, he, so the script doesn't really lend itself to him being as good as he could be, though, I think. It doesn't really center around him. Yeah, and, it, and the marketing would have you believe that. But like half of John Boyega's dialogue in this movie is, Oh, I'm sexy. Look at how sexy I am. While he's talking to a 12-year-old girl. I think you're taking some liberties, but essentially, yeah. That's it's what it felt like. Um, but he's fun, but then like every other actor and character in this movie, aside from, of course, my favorite, uh, Charlie Day, as Charlie Day playing a character in Pacific Rim. Um, I don't remember any of them. There's, like, one of the kids, I think, was on, like, Disney Channel stuff. One of, like, the, the kid pilots or whatever they recruit. That's about it. Every other character, you don't remember. Like, even John Boyega's co-pilot, who they apparently have a history. You don't learn anything about them. Nope. But that's Scott Eastwood. Yeah. Clint Eastwood's kid. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, like, they, they pilot together. And this is a thing that I noticed a lot in this movie. Compared to the original Pacific Rim, I mean, obviously that movie focused a lot on, like, you know, the pilots having to bridge their minds and, like, dealing with that sort of tension between them and trying to, like, release all that stuff. This movie is just kind of like, or anyone can team up now without, like, much training at all. It's like, you know, John Boyga hasn't even seen Scott Eastwood in years. And then the first time they, like, get together to pilot the, uh, the Jaeger or whatever... They just have some trouble with, like, footing or whatever. Yeah, they, they, like, has trouble standing up at first, and that's about it. So it feels like, like, all that was just sort of, like, pushed aside in favor of just just getting to the action quicker, which I, I'm fine with, but it feels like, compare, when you watch the first movie, and with that information about how the pilots have to work, and then you watch this movie, it just feels like they forgot all the rules of Jaeger pilots. I don't, I don't know. If you're going to see this movie, just go for the action. The action's a lot better in this one. Uh, if you... I, I feel yeah. like the biggest problem that Pacific Rim had is that it set up all these great Jaegers and then immediately killed them off. Whereas with this one, they actually do stuff. Yeah. The, well, on the other hand, I don't really remember much about them aside from their weapons. Yeah. But, I mean, granted, that's what happened in the first movie, too. Like, Crimson Typhoon is the one with the three arms. Cherno Alpha is the old one. In this movie, you have the one with the, the, the lightsaber. The one with the wrecking ball. 
the one with the whip, and then the new gypsy. That's about it. I gave her a solid watch and a half out of ten. If if you yeah if you know what you're gonna get, which is just a dumb movie, some dumb action with the Pacific Rim facade over it, you'll probably have an okay time. It's fun, but yeah, if you're going in with any sort of thinking power at all, don't, because you're going to not like it like I did. I'll admit, and... like, creativity-wise, this movie was kind of garbage. It's been, what, like 20 years or something? 10? Or it was 10. 10 years ten, after 10 the since war. they closed the breach, yeah. Yeah. And it feels like not much has changed. Yeah. There's just more Jaegers around. We'll get Which to they, that they, in the spoilery section. Yeah. But yeah, like, just final thoughts overall. If you if you want to see it, go ahead. It's 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 fine. Go with the mentality of a child watching Godzilla movies. Yeah. If, uh, if you're going to be critical of it at all, you may as well not watch it because you're probably not going to like it. All right, from here on out, we're going to talk spoilers. Or at least so, stuff that we liked from the movie that can include spoilers. Yeah. So Other than just giving like a whole synopsis. Yeah, from this point on, like just tread lightly. So since you viewed it in like a more critical sense, start off with the stuff that you hate. I was not a fan of, and this is a pretty big spoiler for the main antagonist of the movie. I was not that big of a fan of what they did with Charlie Day. Who is my favorite character from the original Pacific Rim just because it's Charlie Day from Always Sunny playing a character in Pacific Rim. But in this movie, they s pretty quickly, as soon as they reintroduce him, bring up the fact that he's been infected by a precursor, which I guess is what they're calling the aliens from the other side of the rift now. Um, and he's, yeah, so he's infected with it for whatever reason because I guess he drifted with the kaiju brain. Well, he kept doing it because he got like a, he got like, like a, a high from a it. high from it. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he goes home to his apartment or whatever. He's like talking all sexy to his kaiju brain, like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna give it to me," or whatever. And he like you know drifts again. So he's got precursor in him, I guess. And so he becomes the main antagonist as he's like taking control of all these Jaegers. There's these drone Jaegers that he turns into half kaiju, half Jaegers, and he he opens rifts all over the the Pacific Rim. And, yeah, and so we find out, this is another thing that I didn't like, where it just sort of ignores everything in the first movie. They find out that the goal of the kaiju is not just destroying cities, but it's to get to Mount Fuji, whereupon they will fall in, because you discover that kaiju blue, the kaiju blood or whatever, is reactive with rare earth elements, as they put it. But none of the kaiju were doing that in the first movie. Like, there's there, there's the sequence in Sydney where Mudavor shows up and he just breaks through the wall into Sydney. Why was he going there and not Mount Fuji? Ah, uh, you know. You know, plot convenes. You need a reason for the kaiju to come back because yeah. most of this movie is Jaeger on Jaeger action. Or Jaeger on half Jaeger, half drone Jaeger. Half, half kaiju, half drone Jaeger. Yeah. So so I'll take part of your criticisms and swap them because I like what they did with Charlie Day. I like that they made him a bad guy rather than just introducing another I'm a bad person. Well, yeah, yeah, like I mean I didn't delve much into why I didn't like it. I just wish I mean it's Charlie Day, so he's a funny guy. I wish they went more over the top with it if that's what they were going to do. Yeah. He doesn't do much. He just still acts like Charlie Day. He just says stuff like I'm going to take over the world now. I I do have to say that I appreciate that this movie includes some, I'm using it lightly, character development. Hmm. In the sense that Charlie Day could have taken, you know, the pride and glory that uh, the other Doctor character did, as in saving the world, and uh, continue working with uh, the Jaeger program and researching and everything, but he just kind of becomes a Hannibal Chow character. And does the opposite and kind of goes evil in corporate and everything. Yeah. Like I said, lightly, character development. Yeah, and they, they tried to, like, 
Another thing that bothered me with Charlie Day being the villain is how, like, out of nowhere it comes. Because from the fact that earlier in the movie, they keep trying to set up, like, the big corporate lady or whatever who's gonna, like, get all the drone Jaegers going You gotta have stuff. a twist somehow, Jake. Yeah, but the, th the twist is she doesn't speak a word, but they just play the ominous music and ominous dialogue that makes her sound evil whenever she's on screen. But then, no, I'd say it's Charlie Day. The drone lady's, like, actually pretty good. And then she doesn't show up for the rest of the movie. Oh, she does actually. Yeah, but it's... she shows up in the scrapper robot, <laughs> yeah. which was well, that's... mainly designed to sell toys, but yeah, they I'm... don't sell toys a bit. Yeah, that's scrapper. I I hate scrapper. I didn't think anyone really cares for it. Yeah, because well, here's the thing: the first ten, can you hear that dog, guys? The first like fifteen twenty minutes or so of this movie feels like the opening of one of the I forget. I think it's the newest Transformers, Transformers movie. Transformers Five, I think. Yeah, where. In Transformers, all these like kids and stuff go to like an abandoned junk place where there's like transformer parts or something. Pacific Rim Uprising, there's all these kids like salvaging parts from Jaegers and the abandoned Jaeger thing. Both times they have to outrun the law and their big mech. And both times they run into a little girl with her Deus Ex Machina Transformer slash Jaeger, which this 14 year old girl, granted, Scrapper's a tiny Jaeger. He he doesn't even come up to like the knee of a standard Jaeger. He he's like ankle sized almost. It's like twenty feet tall. Yeah. But this little fourteen year old girl or whatever has somehow managed to create her own functioning Jaeger. Cause she's good with mechanics, Jake. Yeah. And then they just delegate her to piloting one of the other Jaegers later on, like At least they didn't try to pull the whole girl power marketing move with Transformers whenever that girl was in the movie for like 20 minutes. What do you mean girl power in Transformers? Whenever... All, all the girls are objectified in Transformers. <laughs> Not in 5. We gotta be different. Oh yeah, that's right. And I, I do have to say that I like the direction they went with the Jaeger versus Jaeger stuff. Dakota Key, close the door. Sorry. Thanks. Dakota, everyone. Okay, we're done. But yeah, I think having the idea of rogue Jaegers around is neat. That was an interesting thing. But the thing is, they, they keep talking about like rogue Jaegers, like people have been making their own Jaegers. But they don't show any. Yeah, like Scrapper's technically one, but every other Jaeger in the movie is either like the half kaiju, half Jaeger things. Which is a really cool concept, but then immediately scrapped. Oh, yeah. No pun intended. And that's that's the entire sequence that reminded me straight of something from Evang or End of Evangelion. With the mass-produced Avas. Yeah, they have the mass-produced Avas, and then they wind up going bad, and then they all just get, like, slaughtered right away. Which, yeah, yeah, way to go, drone Jaegers. They lasted about, like, five minutes before they just they got, like, a, a tiny explosion in their heads, and they all died. And that's it. But, yeah. One thing I do have to say is that... Uh, Another good thing that I like, and not that I... That's my water bottle. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. Dakota, everyone. That's yours. Sorry. Um, I liked that the movie was different in the sense that it wasn't a beat for beat, just remake of the first one. Because that happens a lot. I can appreciate it that. I, I told you this before. I appreciate it for tr trying mm -hmm. to do different stuff. But it tries to be such a radically different movie. That it just feels too different. Yeah, for me at least. The hell are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> um, I think we try, should... Trying different stuff. That's Yeah. yeah I, I appreciate that this movie tried to do different stuff. Yeah, it just winds up being a different movie. Like almost like tonally from the first and almost like directorial wise obviously because I mean, like Steven DeKnight and Guillermo del Toro but all right well with that being said also with spoilers would you recommend Pacific Rim Resurgence uprising uplifting no Watch it with if, the four-year-old mind. Just go in. If if you do that, yeah, sure, it's gonna yeah. be fun. But otherwise, no. Like I mean, obviously, 
most people watching this are probably going to watch it or they have already watched it anyway because it's Pacific Rim, it's kaiju movies, which yeah, of course. And Dai Kaiju Legends, what are your opinions on Pacific Rim 2? Yeah. It's boring. Yeah, it's, it I is kind of like boring. It. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> Shit. I cut back. See, I, I know most people watching this are going to be like almost obligated to watch it because it is a kaiju movie. And it is cool that we are getting more kaiju movies. I mean, like, honestly, so many right now. It was Shin Godzilla anime, 2014, 2014 sequel, this. Uh -huh. But it. I really hope this doesn't get its sequel. Because they pull that stinger at the end, like, next time we're going to go to them, to the well, aliens, through the rift. Like, uh, let's put this into perspective. Over the weekend, it made $150 million. It did? Making only about 20 to 30 <laughs> domestically. Uh, domestically, I was going to say China. China ate it up. China gave it sixty million. Yep, and that's that's probably why we're still gonna get the third. The movie will probably be successful. I don't think they're making a sequel though. Third one. I can whatever. see that. I can see this being Power Rangers level of success, where people are maybe like, eh, maybe it'll get a sequel. Eh, I hope it doesn't get a. I mean, I'll be, I'll be okay, okay with it. I, I know. I can't talk. I'd be okay with a sequel. But at the same time, if it's going to be this level of quality, I don't want one. I mean, if I had to pay for a movie ticket, I would not probably want to watch it. But I don't. Thanks, Movie Pass. Get your free subscription today for nine ninety five a month. This has been a review of anything.